Thank you very much, uh, Nishal, and uh, good afternoon from Dubai, everybody, where I'm currently located. So with the greatest of pleasure, I will share my screen and uh, let's have a look at uh, this uh, presentation. So the topic that I've been asked to, uh, to share with everybody is on the, um, uh, the, crew, the change uh, management for crew. And uh, with that in mind, we will make a start. So um, first of all, my name is Grant Holmes, and uh, I've actually worked for Cruise Lines before uh, in the role of director and also uh, consulted 12 Cruise Lines. Now, um, the first thing that I want to uh, talk about is Reunion, because um, I had the great fortune of leading the project for the uh, Vanilla Islands and Indian Ocean Ports Association that uh, Henry uh, referred to. And I had a great experience going to each of the destinations and uh, Reunion Island, sitting there on the top of the island where the two volcanoes are looking across the Indian Ocean. It is quite a, a remarkable safe haven in the Indian Ocean. Um, when it's quite stunning that you're right off the coast of Africa, close to Madagascar, yet you have European standards, you know, and, and this was uh, quite incredible for me. And I never expected to have something so organized and so um, well structured. So a few uh, strategic advantages here, you can see the sponsors of the uh, Vanilla Islands um, Ports Association and the study that we did for the cruise. And what we found in Reunion was that for the market, it was ideal for home porting for the French and European markets, because you, know, you just need a European passport and then you're straight in, you no know, complexity of visas and so forth. And they were most receptive. The sector suitability, in essence, it can receive virtually all types of cruise ships for mega discovery, luxury and expedition, but maybe not the very large uh, mega as that would over dominate um, too much uh, people tourism for the island, but certainly the smaller mega ships. And um, from a tourism product uh, perspective, uh, from a nature and adventure, there's a, a lot of high quality excursions, uh, either helicopter around the volcanoes, or walks uh, to places where there are no roads, and uh, a great um, uh, series of uh, nature opportunities, and also the production of vanilla, you can see. From a comp compliance perspective, this is where it was remarkable for me. I never expected to be so, the standards to be so high, you know, from uh, the European uh, compliance levels in quality, health, safety, security, and environment, and uh, ISO compliant. These were my observations, the provisions, uh, the, for provisioning for cruise ships, we found the great links to Europe and the expectations of standards were there with reliable fresh water and it's well connected for the location for, you know, across East Africa, across this Southeast Asia, you know, and it was very reliable, which I think is the most important thing. For passengers and crew these days with the working nomads, free Wi-Fi in the terminal was very important and it, and it was always offered uh, crew logistics is reliable and ideal for a, a European uh, crew, so we could easily transfer crew from there. And in COVID-19, when we faced the crisis, the union was a, a bastion of safety. You know, they offered uh, technical calls and crew changes, you know, in the face of adversity. So I'd like to thank Henry and everybody at the union for doing that, for supporting crew. So in essence, Reunion offers quality services and equipment European to European standards. The Port Reunion is considered by the cruise industry itself as a safe harbor for home porting, logistics, provisioning, crew changes and, and operations in developing a region. Now, I was asked to, in general to talk about the global perspectives of crew change management. So I, I did a little bit of research before to give you an idea of, of the market. And um, this market I can now reveal to you. So the first thing we need to look at is, you know, what is the, vet, the vessel sector market share? And you can see the size of the uh, general cargo ships, you know, they are dominating the market. You can see the percentages and numbers there, followed by the, the, the bulk, you know, and then you have the crude oil uh, tankers and the container ships. 
and then they're here with the with the uh, the row row with the chemical tankers. LNG is quite small, and the cruise industry you can see is very very small when it comes to the number of ships. However, this uh, can change uh, when we talk about the crew because obviously the volumes of crew are very high on cruise. Here you can see the number of crew that were estimated at any one time sailing in the industry and the number of ships. And you can see how that related. In cruise ships, it doesn't even come on the map yet. The number of crew is very high in comparison to the number of ships, because obviously you have all the hotel operations and uh, vast numbers of crew to manage that. In some ships, it's a ratio of two to one. In most, it's like three to four to one. So um, moving on, we can look at the global crew rotation volume. This is the roughly how many rotations are occurring a year by sector. And you can see it's an enormous market with nearly 1 million uh, here in the general cargo ships you know, for rotating crew, you know, 630,000 there for the, for the bulk and, and then a huge uh, half a million for the crews considering there's only like 414 ships. On, on the planet, which gives you a perspective of the importance of the cruise industry. If they're punching above their weight because of the number of crew on board each ship and the size and dynamics of the vessels themselves. So now we move over to the COVID-19 challenges. I mean, it's been, I'm sure that everybody's bored of this topic, you know, because everybody's talking about it all the time. It's dominating the media. But I want to give you some insights and perspective. You know, whenever I face a a major issue in life, I go back to what we call the three constants of life. There are three things that always occur in life, no matter what. And the first one is change. There will always be change. We might not like the change. We might not expect the change, but there will be change. And when change occurs, we have a choice to how we respond to that change. And that's when we can look deeply at our own industries, at our own business, and in the case of crew management, we did that. We looked at what are we doing? What is wrong? What could we correct? Because in the face of the COVID-19 crisis, it exposed everything and magnified everything. And we take a choice. We can be proactive and deal with it, or we can hide it and, and be a victim. But when we make a choice, we must be bound by our principles. And in crew management, it's MLC. We still, and unfortunately, some of those principles were lost during the COVID-19 crisis. And I think we need to bring them back, you know, and we must remember what happened. In Inchgate, you know, we take values and principles very seriously. You know, we're looking at being a world leading in, in quality, health, safety, security, and environment. We're AAA in terms, in terms of corporate compliance and we're globally ISO certificated. Also members of the uh, Maritime Anti-Corruption Network. So when we had the COVID-19 challenges, we have all this complexity. And uh, I would like to bring up the statement from Einstein. It's not one of his most famous statements, but for me, very poignant for the time. And that is, it's simple to complicate, but it's complicated to simplify. And so our job is to simplify this complexity that, that COVID-19 has brought us. And what is that complexity? Well, you know, we, we talk now in confirmed cases, you know, but a confirmed cases depends upon who you test and how many people you test. And uh, testing becomes very important. And there's also a higher number of false positives on these text, tests, which actually check the exosomes of the virus. And uh, there are different types of tests and reliability varies. Then we have the mortality rate, the mortality rate is not actually what we think it is. Did we die uh, of COVID-19 or with COVID-19? You know, and these perspectives can change dramatically and decisions are being made upon that. Then we have uh, lockdowns and different tier levels that you're seeing being introduced like the UK at the moment. Uh, are they more harm than cure? You know, there's a big argument going on around the world at the moment. And you know, wide ranging study is required. We will not know the impact of what this lockdown will be to the economy for some time, but we need to do those studies. And the quarantine, you know, what is a quarantine? How does it work? Uh, or do we really mean self-isolate because it's completely different and where? 
and uh, the data we're, we're told would be led by the science and the models and the data but uh, many of these projection models haven't been uh, correct and when you look back on them so that uh, creates challenges but uh, it, what are the challenges in, in crew management around the world at the moment? Well, the COVID-19 protocols, some of them are extremely complex and often different in each country. You could have two neighboring countries with completely different sets of protocols, making it very challenging for crew management teams to move crew and also ships to operate. Change in regulations developed in a crisis, you know, rushed through, caused by the uh, COVID-19 global pandemic and we, we can see that that is, is quite apparent and it's logical that it happened in that way but it doesn't make it easier. Uh, price increases in some ports around the world we saw increases due to the extra restrictions and uh, protocols you know and these prices were, were difficult for, for cruise ships and all other ships to repatriate crew around the world under a COVID-19 environment. The travel restrictions, they were placed on certain nationalities and airports and border closures, and it all happened suddenly, and extremely difficult to manage. Flight limitations, you know, the lack of flight availability and arranging charters we found very complex, and sudden port closures, you know, which happened all around the world. So what are the solutions? Well, at Inchcape, we're, we're the world's largest um, network for port agency you know and we have about 240 offices you know on the port and we're operating in over 60 countries and you know we have 172 years in the business and nearly 3,000 people working for us and we're doing around 97,000 crew transfers a year which seems like a lot but when you look at the market that I showed you earlier it's, it's actually not that many so we, we feel there's a lot of opportunity to grow in that area and I'll show you how we want to do that. And we've done a cash to master, which also supports the salaries and the payments for the crew. You know, and that went up to $90 million in 2019. So we have a hub concept. You know, we want to bring simplicity to the ship owners and the ship managers for moving crew. So we, have, we utilize our global network, which has a lot of capability. And uh, we give insight and intelligence. And I'm gonna show you where you can obtain that. You can find out what are the immigrations and customs and technical call details in every port in the world on our website. We're giving that information free of charge to all the ships. Dedicated uh, port, uh, point of contact. We offer our ship managers and customers a convenient 24 seven service. So if you're having multiple challenges all around the world and ports are closing and you have a crisis like COVID-19, you can have one point of contact and it works around the clock and with, with a named account owner for each customer. A single point of remittance. So for all of these transfers that are happening all around the world, you know, and the cash masters, just one single point of remittance, which saves a lot of money in transactions and reduces time and supports our customers. A competitive pricing, you know, through global pricing structure, we can reduce the costs. And the economy of scale is larger with a global buying power and that cotton cost mitigation can be passed back to, to our customers. So uh, what is our contribution, uh, you know, during the COVID-19 for, well, for crew repatriations, I personally got involved in, you know, up to 10,000 of them. And we did 6,000 alone in India because India is this, and this was just for the cruise industry alone because it was the most urgent to repatriate crew. You know, we organized charter planes that went to India and Indonesia. We sent charter planes from Greece, for example, to, for Royal Caribbean and to Indonesia and, and other, the Holland America Line Group and Carnival and others to Mauritius. We handled multiple scenarios supporting our customers around the world. When there were COVID-19 cases on board, you know, with medical evacuations, even when ports were closed, we, we sometimes made a special arrangements. Uh, intelligence, we give world leading global port updates. And I actually have a weekly cruise address, but it's mainly for shipping overall. And we're giving updates every single week you know, to all of our customers about what's going on. And the, the report can go up to 40 pages long. And they have travel warnings and updates. So my suggestions for the, to manage things moving forward, you know, we, 
we still haven't got the vaccine. It's coming out, it's just been certified in the UK, but we don't know how it's going to work, you know. So we need education on COVID-19 preparedness training before crew go on board. Uh, there should be a PCR test within 72 hours of uh, traveling and embarking. Quarantine, you know, many ships now are, are prior to embarking are quarantining their crew to make sure, especially on passenger ships where it's more important. And, and on some quarantine the, the crew for 14 days in their cabin on arrival, such as MSC. And safe transfers, you know, we are organizing in case COVID-19 transfer protocols for safe transfers to be sure we can bring people from A to B safely and safe working conditions on board with COVID-19 best practices, which CLIA has very well articulated with 74 recommendations. So, and um, finally, I want to leave everybody. Yes, this is the final, uh, the final message, is that uh, if you want to go to the Inchgate website, you can see this here, and on the website, you'll see this first screen and you can see where it's read COVID-19 updates. All you need to do is click that and you will get every country. You click in the country and you will find out the updated, updated daily and to the conditions of, you know, whether crew transfers or technical calls are possible, port and port. This is the most highly searched item on our website. And, you know, we're trying to help the shipping community get the information out there to help the crew and help the crew management uh, be possible. So um, that's everything from me on crew management and uh, I'll hand back to you, uh, Vishal.